Hi, everybody. Susan Gerbic here. Psychics Explained. I want to show you another video. Another one I have not watched. It is Thomas John, one of our favorite grief vampires. And it's called Thomas John's Extraordinary Talented Psychic Readings. So that sounds amazing. This was uploaded June 13th, 2012. It is a video on the channel PR World. This is the second one I've done um, a video on that is from PR World. And I, apparently this is a private um, uh, <laughs> PR. <laughs> it's a PR company that is trying to repair his reputation. So this is 2012 that it was uploaded. I don't know what, what year it was made. But what had happened in 2009 is Thomas John Flanagan Jr. had been arrested for a lot of things. Apparently, there was several warrants out for him. But what he finally was, I, well, I'm we're still looking for the court documents, um, convicted for, apparently, was for um, selling, not selling, offering up on Craigslist apartments that he did not own, had no business um, renting in places in Alaska, in New York, and multiple places. Okay, this is all according to newspaper documents that we've come across. And they are on one of the videos that I've just done. I did one on the Oscars. And if you look at that, you'll see that I included the newspaper articles in there. Okay, so that was 2009. And by 2012, he's really trying to improve his reputation. Apparently, he's dropped the last name Flanagan, um, and he is now Thomas John. He uses uh, Manhattan Medium, and he has that for a few years, and then he ends up becoming the seatbelt psychic dude or the Thomas John experience guy. So that's kind of the old history of it you may or may not know that so this video we're looking at right here is a video apparently made by a, a pr company oh in 2015 i believe he is going to be sued by a different pr company that he's hired that has been trying to clean up his reputation um and and uh purportedly according to the newspaper documents trying well according to the newspaper documents that say they are quoting the court documents they're trying to boost his reputation and try to make him into a, a medium right so this video that i'm going to show you has 109,983 views it's so almost 110,000 views it was uploaded in 2012 so how many comments how many likes would you expect a video that has 110,000 views to have throw out some numbers there you guys it's been out since 2012 it's about a psychic it has 110,000 views and it has 647 likes which is a very low number and it has 131 comments. Comments are open. You can use them. You can type in them if you want. So it's extremely odd. 110,000 views, but only 131 comments and only 647 likes. So what does that say? Well, we can speculate. And speculating, I know that there are ways of getting views purchased. And also you can purchase likes from what I understand. I don't know how, but I'm sure it's a Google away. And what will happen is there's some way of making it so that it just, I don't know, an algorithm comes in and just repeatedly views your video. I don't know what it does, but that's what I suspect because 131 comments is a lot of comments missing. And if you're, leaving comments and somebody is curating them going through and removing the bad comments that's a lot of work 
Um, possibly the comments have to be approved and only 131 have been approved and everything else is just sitting in some backlog somewhere. That's possible. So I don't know, but I just know that that's odd. And the comments as I went through them, they're all very positive. So this video is eight minutes. Um, 10 seconds. So let's see how far we can get through it. I've not watched it before. I'm going to just make it a full screen and we're going to go and look at this Thomas John's Extraordinary Talented Psychic Readings and see. Now I'm going to get my paper and my pencil. As you guys know me, uh, you, if you want to take notes yourself and let's compare them on the other, other side of this video or whenever I stop it. Um, I, I have just kind of fast forward through it a little bit. He's a very young uh, Thomas John at this point. And he is, it looks like it's chopped up from different, um, like he's walking on the street at one point and there's, it, it looks like it's a little mix mash of stuff. So if there's a natural place to stop, I'll stop if, or just let it go. I don't know. Cause I haven't watched it. So we're going to find out you and I together, please make sure you're leaving me comments. Uh, and I will be happy to answer those. This young man is one of the newest and the greatest I've ever met. Hi, I'm Thomas John, and I am a psychic medium. Basically, um, I'm a medium, so I connect with people who have passed away. A psychic is someone who basically gives clairvoyant information about the future or clairaudient information about the future or current situations. A medium is someone who actually connects and speaks with the spirit or souls of someone who's passed away. Almost all mediums are, have psychic abilities, but not all psychics have mediumship abilities. From the moment I sat down till an hour later, my life has changed. The inexplainable gift of someone being able to connect you to another dimension, to another realm. Even though your dad was older, did he pass quickly or suddenly? Yeah. Okay, like I feel like it was kind of unexpected. Yeah. And your dad comes in strong. Are you named after him? Yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Is there was somebody like um, T-R, uh, T-R-I name? Yeah. Who's that? That's my brother's, uh, this is his grandson, Tristan. He's, your dad tells me that guy, that kid's smoking and he shouldn't be. He's been, he's been in some trouble, yeah. Yeah. The cousin's brother's passed? Did he take his own life? Oh, yes. Absolutely. It was a long time ago, like 15, 20 years ago. Yes. Yeah, I know, because he's telling me. <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. <laughs> So my first experience with a ghost was my grandfather visiting me when I was about four or five years old. And uh, he would come into my bedroom and give me messages um, about his life and stuff that even my parents didn't know. And I would go back to them and, and they, they would validate it from other members of the family. And I believe it was just him telling me that, you know, he was watching over me basically. As a kid, you don't really have a way to sort of I guess no have that perspective, but my parents were definitely pretty freaked out about it. They were very religious. They really didn't encourage it. They thought it was pretty strange. And I kind of just turned away from it, basically. And then after college, I went on to college, moved away. I got gotten kind of re-guided back into this direction. I lost uh, several close people in my life that I actually had you know bonds with. And from there, it just started to come on pretty, pretty strong. Do you have children? Yes. Okay. Is there two children? Yes. Okay, because she's talking about a girl and a boy. Oh, my God. And she's... Incredible. Does somebody have the same birthdays? Oh, this is unbelievable. You're kidding me. <laughs> Yeah, because she just said the same birthdays. I'm years apart. Are you returning here to do any work, do you know of? Yes. Okay. To do taxes. Oh. I just passed my tax exam. And she also really likes Chad. Oh, wow. Yeah, she likes Chad. She says, I, I really like Chad. And I also have to tell you, um, <laughs> yeah, she's very strong about that. She says, I, I love Chad. And she's also telling me, she says, you do too, though. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What is the connection with Breeze? Breezy. I live in Breezy. Oh, Breezy Point. Okay, because they just said Breeze. I didn't know if they were sending you a Breeze or what. There's, I have no idea. I'm just the telephone wire. I can't control it. 
I think the best way someone can prepare to sit for a reading is to just be open to the information that you might receive. Um, it happens both in psychic and mediumship readings where people might be expecting to hear from this person, but it's a different loved one that comes through. Or they might be expecting to hear about this area of their life, but it's another area of their life that I get information on. So the most important thing is probably just to be open, come in with sort of a clear mind. I always say it's, it's okay to be skeptical, it's not okay to be totally cynical. Skeptical means you're waiting for information that you can sort of agree with or say yes or no to. Cynicism means you're not open at all. So as long as you're skeptical, that's fine. I'm also getting something about, did you just move here? Kind of, just came up last night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's showing me all these cards? There's something like Piccolo or something. What is that? What the heck is that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're all showing me this. I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of it before. They just showed me the word. I thought it was Pinocchio. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they're all up there playing cards. <laughs> Most messages come down to the simple message of love. They're, I've never really had a reading where someone comes through and says something like, you know, I'm mad at you, I hate you, don't ever don't get in touch with me again. They're usually messages of love and basically, I'm okay, I'm watching over you. Sometimes they can be very specific. I want to say that they're in a rhombus shape, or they're in like a square, but you wear them like a diamond or something. And I want to say they're in an envelope, or they're in wax paper or something. Sometimes they're more spiritual guidance, sometimes they're memories of things from the past. Your father is more upset about maybe the way he went about, I mean, the way he left things after he passed. It just depends on the particular reading, but in, in general, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, they're messages of validation that love continues from the other side. He just wants to thank you. I mean, he's, he's thankful to you. And he's showing me that there's gonna be someone else for you in the future. I feel like there will be someone for you where you can kind of meet someone, or there's gonna be something for you. He has a little, brown dog with him. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> he goes, what the hell are you talking to me for? She wants to hear about the dog. <laughs> she doesn't give a shit about me. <laughs> I died 15 years ago. <laughs> I feel that we are definitely reacquainted or you know brought back in touch with our loved ones and I also feel that we go on and do other work in other dimensions um, and I also feel that we communicate still with people that are here so it basically is another dimension that we go on to but I still believe that we're connected with the earth it's just a different awareness a different sense of that it's it's not the same relationship that we might have had with someone when they were here but the relationship still continues so i basically believe we go on to our next job who's bro bro continues but what is that name is that i have a sister brooke was she in the, in the medical profession because she's showing me a, like a red cross she worked in hospital i start to see little what i would say is almost like forms of light and it's like they can communicate information to me you know it's like they can send over information into my head um but it's usually symbolic so it does happen sometimes in my daily life of just kind of running around that i will see a spirit around somebody and could be walking down the street or you know in the grocery store and occasionally i will offer that message to that person if i feel like they'll be open to it who she's wishing you a happy birthday in a week or there's something about a birthday in a get week. out of here that's tomorrow how about yeah. How do you know this? Do you either have the same birth month or the same birth date? Yes! Yeah. Oh, get out of here! She was the oh, sh Unless I could, I, I feel her older than you, I would have said this is more like a sister for you. Because that's yes, the type of they, everybody would say that. You are amazing. I have never heard of so many extraordinary stories, seen so many people comforted and guided and, and, and felt reassured by his gift. Hey, what'd you guys think? Interesting look. Now, I talk about this a lot.
Thomas John, as well as all the other psychic mediums that are working right now, have done thousands and thousands and thousands of readings, maybe tens of thousands of readings at this point. You become very good at it. You become very glib. We're at a point where you can just, just say whatever, make those connections very quickly. It looks very um, natural. And they're not even really engaged thinking about it. It's so fast. I went to go see a famous comedian, Jay Leno, once. And we went, uh, my boyfriend and I went to go see him um, on New Year's, New Year's Eve. And he was going to do two shows that night. And I remember sitting there and going, wow, this guy is amazing. He's so quick. And his, his uh, the way he, his banter was so quick wonderful and my boyfriend looks at me and like he says he's been saying that same that same spiel for as long as I've known him 20 30 years it's the same thing and it, it, if you go see a, a magician or a mentalist or a comedian in a lot of ways you do if you if you're in a relationship with them where you're going to see them a lot um it's the same thing the pat it, it's just like blah 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 Blah, 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 blah. I mean, you could just understand that they're going to say the same thing each time. So when you see somebody like this who has had 10,000 or more readings, it does seem very natural and just, it just comes right out. And that is what you're seeing here with Thomas John. Now he is brand, he's not brand new. He's been doing this a while at this point, if this is 2012, he has been doing it for a few years. And you can see the same style, how it's coming, how there feels a little, it feels like it's, it's um, very similar to now. I mean, the way he says things and the, the things he says, they use a lot of humor, a lot of these mediums to try to break the tension in the room. But when you know what's going on, like you and I know, we know he's hot reading. Thomas John is notorious for hot reading. He's always hot read. He'll only cold read if he gets himself into a situation where he really can't get out of it. Like a, uh, somebody calls in on the phone and it's not somebody he's already pre-decided that they would be getting a reading, which he has done. I have that on videos here on this channel if you want to look that up. Um, and you can tell cold reading from hot reading. And everything he was doing there was a hot read. To the people, remember it's carefully edited video. This is his video. Those people were sitting on that couch in his office. I guess he had an office somewhere in Manhattan for a while. Um, those people are sitting there and they're getting a reading and they know they're being filmed and they're totally amazed. I'd be blown away too. But he knows who they are. He knows who they are ahead of time. He's already done some sort of research on him. Occam's razor. That's that's it. He is doing that. That's why it's so specific and it looks so amazing. Only when they're caught in it do you really realize what's going on as we've caught him dozens and dozens of times. And the videos are up on my channel if you want to see those. So that I just find it really it's powerful for the person sitting in that uh, in that couch or in that audience to have these specific names come through and these specific things. And he's so glib about that, like, oh, it, it was a dog. And he, you want to talk about the dog? We don't care about that guy. He's been dead 15 years. He doesn't care. And, oh, he just wants to tell me this. And, you know, it, it's it's um, it's an act. That's, I guess, the easiest way of saying it. It is an act. But it's like improv, where you're very quick on your feet and you're thinking, and it's different in that each situation is a little bit different. And if you have um, a little bit of information about these people, um, and you just have it memorized, like five items, a dog, a brown dog, um, somebody's name is Brooke, um, a, um, a boathouse, a vacation in Hawaii, and this, you know, some other like uh, a favorite food or something, just whatever you've been able to find off of their Facebook page or from previous readings you've had with them 
or one of their friends, um, or you overheard a conversation, or there's lots of ways of knowing what's going on. So in some of the old days, they used to have them fill out like a prayer card. Who do you want to hear from? Write it down on this piece of paper. This is common. This is mentalism, okay? Write it down on this piece of paper because we want to make sure that you focus on that in your brain beforehand. But now keep the paper, hold it, fold it, put it in your pocket, and don't let anybody else see it. Okay, you got it? Perfect. And what actually is happening is the, <laughs> the, the thing you're writing on the clipboard that you're writing on underneath has like a carbon paper so they can go back and look. That's one of hundreds of tricks that mentalists use and also psychic mediums used to use. It's not as common now because now most people can't cold read. It's much, it's much easier. Okay. So some of the things I caught, uh, there was that interesting little music in the background there, mostly women. Did you notice that? There was some guy in the audience at one point, he's just sitting there looking at his fingernails like, like this, like, oh brother. <laughs> All the women are like, wow, wow. Man. Um, so this is definitely hot reading. Another tell of hot reading is that he said um, somebody unalived themselves. I guess that's what we're supposed to say on videos these days. And he didn't say unalived. He used the S word there. And when a medium is saying that, they're not going to say that as a cold read. That's that's going to completely ruin the whole mood of the room if it's wrong. So they're not going to say that unless they're absolutely sure that is, um, they have that information and it's correct. Now, don't forget, he may have read these other women before. The people that are there may be regulars. So he's, he's already found out this information from them. And then all he has to do is jot a few things down and remember for the next time he sees that same person in the audience. And let me be clear too. Because I've gotten this a bunch of times. People will say, there's no way he's got everybody in that room memorized. He's went on to everybody's social media and he's looked at all this stuff and he's got it all memorized. No, I've never said that. That's not how this, this little um, facade works. What How it works is you have four or five people in the audience that you have enough information on to do a 10, 15 minute reading. And then the rest of it is filler. The person also volunteers things because they're motivated sitters. So you got a room of 25, 30 people, five of those people get a reading and that's it. He doesn't have every person in their um, information on every single person. He has enough to just do a show. The show is like an hour, two hours, right? So he's not going to read every single person in the room. If he is looking at social media, which we know he does now since 2017, 18, I know for sure because we, we've got videos of that. And I don't see why he wouldn't have been doing social media back then too or you know, prayer cards or, or whatever. He is... Um, he only, like I said, he only has to know a little bit. And if he tries to get in because the person's paid for the reading with a credit card or they're using social media or signed up by their email or whatever, he, if he's trying to find some specific information about a person and he can't find it and he knows they're going to be coming to his reading, then he skips them and goes to somebody else because there's a lot of content in there within that room of 30 or so people. Um, and a lot of people come as groups too. So their sisters and mothers and daughters and all that will come as a group. So what applies to one person applies to the person sitting next to him as well. So it feels like a bigger group of people. Um, uh, this line here. Oh, what does this say? Missing the run in with. Oh, yeah, he's talking about his history. He skips over the fact that he had a run in with the law. Then again, it's a PR uh, video. So why would he do it? Why would he? Uh, why would he mention that? I like this line. I've never, I've never heard him use this since. I'm just the telephone wire. I haven't heard that him say that again. It's kind of interesting. Um, oh, this is fascinating too. This is another insight. He says I get other information, so sitter, the sitter needs to be open to that information. 
okay, if you are doing a hot read, and I do this a lot whenever Mark Edward and I are doing a performance somewhere, and we're trying to explain how this works. Well, if we have an audience we're going to be um, speaking to, then I will find out the information from the people who are going to be in the audience. And like if it's a if it's a group and people are saying I'm going to be attending this Facebook group or I'm going to be at this conference or I'm going to be in this room. However, you can find that out or you might ask somebody who's an organizer. I need a little information on a few of these people. Can you get it for me? And then what happens is we just go to their Facebook page, for example, and you go through and you look at the photographs and you look at the comments. I don't spend maybe more than 10 minutes a person. And usually you can get enough information. You can get somebody's first name, like a sister, like he did in this case, or maybe uh, the name of a dog or or all those different things. I usually go to photos first and I look at photos that are sepia or black and white. And then you go through those. Those are usually put up on people's Facebook pages because they're celebrating an anniversary um, or it's um, somebody has died or somebody is graduating or it's a Mother's Day, Father's Day, Veterans Day, some kind of opportunity where they're going to put up an older photograph and then once they you see that older photograph then usually there's comments from other relatives who are saying oh I remember Uncle Bob oh we used to always go fishing okay so my point is is that when you're going to go look on somebody's Facebook page or other social media and you're looking for something to hot read you're not looking for specifics you're looking for whatever you want, whatever you can find. And maybe their high school they went to, and maybe um, a, an accident they had, and maybe something about work, and maybe somebody's name who's posted that is obviously a very close friend or family member of yours, and maybe a birthday, and maybe uh, some anniversary coming up. Or like I said, looking at old photographs, you can find out information about somebody's parents or grandparents, anniversary dates, what month, you know, or, you know, I see your grandparents were married on Valentine's Day. Well, how did you know that? That's a shock. Were you named for this person? You know, that kind of thing. Those are all shocks. And the psychic is not looking for specific information. They're looking for whatever they find. And once you get like three three items at least, um, anything more than five is just too much, three items for sure. And then you can just say the word like, oh, what is this about? What is this about Perry Mason? And they'll be like, what? How did you, what? And then it makes sense to them. And, but, and then the sitter will tell you what it is about Perry Mason. But the psychic doesn't have to say anything about Perry Mason. They just have to throw out that word. So, what I was getting at is where he said, I get other information than what you probably were looking for. Like I really wanted to connect to my dad, but here comes somebody um, named Elizabeth into the conversation. And that may be because he found something on Elizabeth. No reason. Just that's what he found. So um, he also says, um, oh, this one was fascinating. He had those four women in there. He said the word Pinocchio, but it was the card game. Um, of course, I can't say it right now. Pin, um, you guys are all screaming at the uh, screen right now. As soon as I said Pinocchio, I've forgotten the word. But it, when he was trying to say it, I, I knew exactly. It's an old card game a lot of people used to play. Not, not bridge, but like a... Um, um, like cribbage or oh I've forgotten the word it's just went right on my head but you know what I'm talking about so it's one of those words it's it's one of those card games that a lot of people used to play a lot um four people would sit and they'd play it and I keep wanting to say Pinocchio <laughs> uh, anyway so he said he says he says, I'm throwing out, he throws out this word and the women sees on it and they say, oh no, it's that, it's this word. It's this card game. And of course they used to play it all the time. 
And he says, oh, because he's showing me the word. And I thought it said Pinocchio. So think about what that is. He's showing me the word. So, so Thomas John is saying that this dead person is showing him a word. So is it like a piece of paper that the, the, the guy picks up and he holds it up like this and he's showing him the words, how it's spelled, you know, the letters of the alphabet there. And Thomas John in his, I guess in his mind or something, he sees a word and he reads it off and he misreads it and thinks it says Pinocchio. So this this is just, it's fascinating. I mean, I thought, you know, well, this isn't real. Okay, communicating with the dead is not real. So I guess he's trying to say that they show him a word like a, you know, they write it on a board or something and hold, I, it's just silly, right? At a certain point, it's it's silly. But when the women tell him it's a card game, he says, ah, well, that's what they're doing. They're sitting there They're sitting there and playing cards. That's what they're doing in heaven. It's just like he takes it from this. Here's a strange word. I don't know what it means. The women in the audience say, oh, this is a card game. They used to play it all the time. And he says, yes, because that's what they're saying. They're in heaven now playing cards. See how it just flows really quickly. And it comes out so quickly and glibly with so much practice that it just feels natural. And all the women just sit there and go, that's right. I'm sure they are playing cards in heaven together and having a great time playing this card game. Anyway. All right. Usually messages from love. They're almost all messages from love. Yeah, that's interesting. Love continues from the other side. Ooh, really? And we go on to work in other another dimension wow that's pretty interesting so i was unimpressed it just shows him practicing and and you know how he's coming along with his with his hot readings and um how he's done thousands and thousands of readings i this none of this is convincing at all but it just show you how convincing it can be to a person who's unaware of hot reading, unaware of of how this little, you know, um, espionage thing goes. And once you see it, it's hard to not see it, right? It's one of those things where you, as you know what's going on, you're like, wow, more hot reading. Okay, there he is. I wonder, well, yeah, more hot reading. Because we don't know the story behind those women in the audience. We don't know if they were random people that they just funneled in to have the reading or if they were people who regularly had readings and possibly had readings from Thomas John. The woman who announced him, can't even remember her name already, um, who said he's just so accurate. When you're already a believer, when you already believe that this is communication is, is possible and happens, then it doesn't take much to convince you. And when people tell me there's no way that he could have known that information, I'm here to tell you there are many ways they know that information. I see it all the time in all the videos that I have that are up on my channel show how possible this is. If you look at this with an open mind and look at it as this is a trick, let's figure out how this trick specifically is done. Well, then you just, like I say, you just can't unsee it. It's it's too obvious. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this visit back in 2012 to the world of Thomas John and his extraordinary talented psychic readings. And um, if you like this, please uh, like and share. I'm trying to build our community of on Psychics Explained. And please leave me lots of comments. I'm always happy to respond to your, to your comments. You guys have such insight that I miss. As I said, this is the only time I've read, watched this video. I probably will never watch it again. And so there may be many things that I missed that other people picked up on. Um, in fact, we just had a really great insight um, about Zoom uh, that was really interesting about Matt Frazier, just somebody the other, yesterday, I think she left a comment saying, oh my gosh, um, that was, that was 
that made me think of something and I think she's right on it. So I'm going to have to look into what she said, but please leave me comments. You guys, you guys are, are brilliant. Thanks.